Hello, welcome to this video on examples on Faraday's law. Um, I will try in this video to solve a couple of examples on uh, gen generation of electromotive force um, through either the movement of wires in magnetic fields or the time change of magnetic fields. Um, and uh, this is one of the consequences of Faraday's law the time varying vary magnetic fields give rise to electric field and this electric field means you can have potential difference between uh, two terminals so now let's take a look at, at the theory first we'll first review the theory and then we'll start to go to examples okay you can get a, a generation of uh, electromotive force through different two different means first one if you have wires a wire like this one moving in a magnetic field so you have a magnetic field here this b it's pointing in a certain direction space if you have and you have a, an, a conducting wire and it's moving with a velocity u then um, according to Lorentz law uh, the, the there is a force affecting all the charges existing inside this conductor this conductor has plenty of free charges plenty of free electrons they are all going to be affected by a force and this force is q u cross b so you have to take the cross product between u and b and this will tell you the direction of this force but we know from the definition of the electric field that force is equal to QE so we can simply call this term here as an equivalent um, electric force electric field that is created by the movement of the conductor in a magnetic field um, so for a situation like this one if you have this is this is your conductor here and this is the direction of this electric field which is induced by the a change by the movement of the, of the wire in the magnetic field then this electric field what's gonna do is gonna push the electrons to this side of the terminal it's gonna push a positive charge to the side of the terminal it's gonna make this side higher in potential than this side okay so effectively this part now behaves like a battery it looks really like a battery so if you want to see it looks something like this it's a battery okay and of course if you close the circuit outside with resistance you can get current flowing okay so this is the first way of creating uh, electromotive force it's by the movement of wires in constant magnetic fields or even time varying magnetic fields doesn't matter but constant magnetic fields usually the one and this is how we usually have ge uh, generation uh, gener this is how generators work um, hydro generators you have a magnet very strong magnets and uh, the wires will be moving these wires here they will be moving in a very strong magnetic field is a magnetic field and because of their movement very strong force created it moves the positive charge to one side negative charge to one side creating potential and this potential can be can be transmitted and can be used for um, for uh, applica different applications and so on so this one way of generating electromotive force Okay, the second way of creating an electromotive force is through Faraday's law. Faraday's law, what, does it say, does, what it says is that if you carry out the line integral of the electric field around the closed contour, then this will be equal to minus the rate of change, the time rate of change of the flux going through the area as surrounded by this contour. So here, for example, we can have this contour here. Okay, so this is the contour in which we integrate the electric field. This, the value of this e dot dl can be actually measured. You make a tiny cut in the wire, and then you measure the uh, the potential difference that you get. What is this EMF equal to? Well, it's equal to mi minus the rate of change of the flux going through the area. So if the area here is the area of this circle, or whatever shape it is, you have mag magnetic flux density vector B going through it. Then this magnetic flux density creates flux psi okay there is a flux psi going through the surface and this flux psi it's simply the integral of b over the surface so i can integrate b through the surface now this psi is a function of time if you differentiate psi relative to t then with a negative sign this will give you the actually the electromotive force you can measure now there's one word of warning here one word of warning you have to observe the polarity with which you apply this law. So let's see. If you are integrating in this direction, e dot dl is carried out in this direction, then you are assuming that your reference potential 
is this one relative to this one. In other words, if the EMF that you yeah, that you create, this is an EMF, it's a voltage. If this voltage is positive, this actually means that this terminal is higher than this terminal. If this value is negative, this means that this terminal is below this terminal. Okay. Now, if you if why do we have that? Because if this is the direction of the of the contour C, then this is the direction of the normal. This is the direction of S. Then this will be also the reference direction of psi. Okay, because of the right hand rule. If you rotate a right hand screw in this direction, this right hand screw is gonna progress in this direction. So word of warning, when you talk about ds here to carry out this integral, you have to observe the right hand rule. Okay, you have to make sure that if you, if you go in the in the direction of the contour, then you will progress in the direction of the S. Okay, so um, I will be showing you more examples of that, but a word of warning, again, I'm going to stress again, is that this polarity here is a reference polarity. So if this EMF, which you can measure, is positive, this means that this terminal is higher than this one. If this EMF is negative, this means that this terminal is higher than this one, okay? So these are the reference polarity, and I selected this reference polarity because of the direction of my contour. I start from negative, and I go to the positive terminal. Okay, to illustrate this further, further I created these two figures. We have here uh, a loop, okay? So you have here a loop, okay? You carry out the integral of e dot dl, and the direction of the integration is this direction, okay? So in this direction here. Okay, are going in this direction, and as a result, and according to the right hand rule, the normal to the plane is in this direction. Okay, good. So let's assume that at one instant of time, B, B is B is a changing, of course, with time. B goes up and goes down with time. It could be sinusoidal, it could have some other dependence of time. It can it can it, it will have to have some time varying variation in order for you to measure some voltage. So let's assume that B is increasing with time. So V is increasing with time. So the, the magnetic flux density going through the surface increasing with time. This means that you, if you carry out an integral of B dot ds over this surface, then epsi also is increasing with time. Okay? Then epsi will be increasing with time. If epsi is increasing with time, anything that increases with time has a negative, uh, sorry, a positive slope with time. Partial epsi partial t is going to be positive. So V is increasing with time. Epsi is increasing with time, partial Epsi partial T is going to be positive. This means, according to Faraday's law, that the EMF is going to be negative because there is a negative sign between them. Okay, so what does this negative sign mean? It means that this terminal will be lower in potential than this one. So if you close the circuit and you connect the resistance, then the current flowing in this circuit, and I'm going to draw it with a red band, will be actually going in this direction. The current's flowing this way. So why does it flow in this way? Let's see. If the, the current created in this, in this loop, what is the magnetic field, what is the direction of the magnetic field created by this current? If you take a look at this, uh, this magnetic field here at a point like this one here, you see it's coming out from the beach. If you take a look at the point inside the loop, you'll see it's actually going into the beach. Okay, so what it's trying to do is trying to oppose the change in the magnetic field. So the magnetic field is increasing, Okay, so the current created by closing the circuit will actually create another magnetic field that will try to oppose the increase. So the magnetic field is increasing this way. The other magnetic field creating by the current is going to be in the opposite direction. And this is a law of physics. Uh, we know that if you have an action, it's going to create a reaction that's trying to oppose it somehow. Something like this is happening here. Okay, so let's repeat this again. Because it's, it's, it's a very fine point, you must really understand it to be able to solve these questions. If I take my direction of integration to be this one, okay, in the, in the counterclockwise direction, then the normal to the surface must be in this direction according to right-hand rule. Okay, then the, if, if I integrate from here to here, then this is the reference polarity. This one is higher than this one. Let's see, let's assume that B is increasing with time. So the, the magnetic field is getting stronger with time. This means that the flux flowing out the surface S is also increasing with time. If it's increasing with time, then it has a positive slope relative to time. 
but the EMF is minus partial psi partial t. This is the EMF. Then this is going to be negative. What does this mean that this is negative? It means that the polarity is opposite to the reference polarity. So this side here is higher in potential than this one. So if you connect the resistance in between them, current starts to flow this way. Notice what this current is trying to do. This current is actually in the clockwise direction. It's going to create a magnetic field here in the outward direction coming out from the page. But here it's going to be going into the page. So it's, gonna tr it's trying to oppose the increase in the magnetic field. Okay? So, and this makes quite sense for us. Okay? Now let's take a look at this second situation. Exactly the same loop. We uh, carry out the integration in this direction. Then this is the reference polarity for the potential. And this is the normal to the surface. Okay? Then, if B is going down in time, B is, go B is getting weaker. Let's assume the magnetic field is still going pointing in this direction, but it's getting weaker with time. Then the flux also will get weaker with, with time, because the flux is nothing but the integral of B over this area. If the flux is going down with time, then its derivative relative to time is negative. And this means that the EMF is positive. What does it mean to have positive EMF? That indeed this terminal is higher than this one then the current flowing in the circuit is going to be in this direction. Okay? It's going in the actual counterclockwise direction. What does this current, what is this current trying to do? If you try to see the magnetic field created by this current, you will see that it is coming out from the page here and going into the page at a point like this one. Okay? It's like circles, okay? So it comes out from the page here and then it goes into the page here. So here, it's actually trying to help the weakening field, which makes quite sense. So here, the current that will be induced in the circuit is trying to help the weakening magnetic field, while here is trying to oppose the. It's trying to weaken the strengthening magnetic field. Okay, it's a very, it's a very neat thing if you think about it. Okay, so this is all what you need to know. The direction C and the direction of the area are related by the right hand rule. This reference polarity you must observe it and understand that this simply gives you a reference polarity. If the EMF is positive, then this terminal is higher than this one. If the EMF is negative, then this terminal is higher than this one. Okay, we move then to see some examples. 